Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I have another Patreon question. This one comes from Brandon G, and he asks, generally, games based on movies, TV, etc., are poorly received, though some are hidden gems. What are your favorite games based on licensed properties, and why? So to help me answer this question, I have assembled the Metal Jesus crew. Let's start with Kelsey. Two of my favorite not-so-common licensed games, it could not be more different. The first is the Shoujo Sen Senshi Sailor Moon for the Super Famicom. This is a Sailor Moon beat-em-up game. There's a second one that's called Bishujo Sensei Senshi Sailor Moon R that's a little bit better, um, but they're both really excellent kind of Final Fight style games where you can change between the characters. They all have different uh, strengths and stuff, and it's just a really, really fun beat-em-up. The second one is NBA Hangtime. Uh, everybody knows NBA Jam, which is an excellent game, but NBA Hangtime is made by the same people. They lost the rights to the NBA Jam name, and the next one they came out with was NBA Hangtime for the 64. Uh, pretty similar to NBA Jam, so if you like the kind of on-fire mechanic and just the really arcadey, you know, it's not an accurate basketball simulation whatsoever, but it's a lot of fun. All right, licensed game picks. First one up, is the Terminator for Sega CD. I really enjoy this game. It really captures the essence, and it, it's, it's a brutal game. It, it has a rockin' soundtrack, and, and actually one of the better games for the, for the Sega CD. I, I recommend it. Uh, it's challenging. It was just uh, my type of game I like to play, those side-scrolling action games, and it, 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 it's good. Check it out. Next one is Mega Force. that's right. I am a huge fan of this terrible movie. It was a, <laughs> uh, early 80s, failed. I mean, this this is a, a, a total disaster of a movie. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out because it's so bad. Uh, they did do a riff tracks of it as well. Well, they made a 2600 game, and the, and the 2600 game plays a little bit like Chopper Command or, Def or Defender, and I recommend it. And so you're pretty much in this like f flying battle bike and you go around uh, protecting one city while blowing up another city. And it, it's good. It, definitely check it out. It's got some, uh, some, some good graphics for 2600, and it's a lot of fun to play. Hello, fellow adventurers. Grab a tankard of ale, and I'll tell you a tale of a license game that doesn't suck. And that is Lord of the Rings War in the North. It's an action RPG that parallels the events of Lord of the Rings, so you'll meet some familiar faces along the way. But you can create your own fellowship, playing as a dwarf from Erebor, an elf from Rivendell, or even a ranger. And it has awesome, brut brutally realistic combat that has sweet combos. And this game is definitely best enjoyed with a friend. Yes, I think all adventures are better co-op. And if you're more of a Star Wars Battlefront sort of adventurer, then I would also recommend Lord of the Rings Conquest. You can choose to save Middle-earth or destroy it. So fare thee well and good luck on your future travels. Play Got Rigs, how are you feeling? There's a lot of great games out there that are based on movies. Well, more than the other way around, for sure. One game that a lot of people don't talk about is Willow the Arcade Game. Willow for the Nintendo is great, but the arcade game, it's that classic Capcom-style arcade. It's kind of like a linear Wonder Boy, uh, if you ever check it out, so please do. And another game that I really, really like that a lot of people don't talk about, it's for the Famicom, and it's King Kong 2. It is based on a real movie, Man, but I'm not a huge kaiju knowledgeable about all that, so I couldn't tell you a whole lot about it. So we say King Kong 2 for the Famicom? Y yes. It's based on King Kong Lives. Okay, and that's a real movie? Yeah, yeah, it's a sequel to the De Dino De Laurentiis uh, King Kong from the 70s. Okay. Yeah, it's all about how King Kong gets like a robot heart and uh, uh, there's like a girl Kong, they end up having a baby by the end of it. It's a great movie. Oh, okay. Of all of the games that Konami could, of all the King Kongs that Konami could have made a game out of, they decided to use that one, which is amazing, but it's probably a better game than it is a movie. Okay. Thanks? You're welcome. D do, do I know you? Uh, my name's Joe, I'm definitely not stalking you.
This is a really good question, and I like it because it was tough not to pick South Park Stick of Truth because that's not a hidden gem. It's already a great game. And I almost, almost, almost picked South Park Chef's Love Shack because it's not a bad trivia game, but instead for my hidden gem, I'm going to pick South Park Let's Go Tower Defense. Now this was an Xbox Live only game, and what is so special about it to me is that it was the first South Park game that really looked like a South Park episode. In this game, you'll see familiar power defense tactics like you see in Field Runners or even Plants vs. Zombies, but you get to play as a South Park characters and you have that glimpse of South Park humor, whether you're fighting the Ginger Kids or seeing little clips of South Park episodes that you unlock in between. I just, I really liked this game. I thought it was a fun tower defense game and it was the first game, South Park game, that really encompassed the South Park art. Anyways, thanks for the question. All right, I'm gonna give you guys two games. The first game is gonna be uh, Windy Every Which Way, an awesome platform game. And this is a spinoff of the Casper the Ghost series back in the 1950s. Uh, if you guys remember Casper the Ghost, is the scary, everybody was scared of him and all that good stuff. Wendy, I didn't really see too many cartoons with her in it, but the game is pretty awesome. It's a platform game where the gimmick is you have to like jump on the ceiling, which you don't jump on the ceiling, you gravitate to the ceiling kind of. So when you can't get past a certain platform or it's too high, you just gravitate to the ceiling and you know, you get through levels like that. Pretty cool game, uh, very unknown. Cho Kosuko Grandal is based off the anime uh, Hyper Speed Grandal. Uh, one of the first animes I saw back in the day, uh, very cool show. Uh, the game is pretty much uh, a platform game, kind of I would say the mixture of Mega Man with Metroid and a little bit of Castlevania. Fantastic game, I had a great time with it. Um, it's just, uh, you, there's a boss fight at every level, anime cutscenes, uh, you get different armors. Uh, an armor thing is really different from the uh, anime because in anime there's only one armor, but in, in the, uh, the game you actually get armor, so they actually expanded a little bit on the story, which is really cool. Um, basically a girl named Hakuru, Hak Hakuru uh, she gets this armor and I won't go too much into it, but you know, she has to save the day. It's pretty cool. So the game is not in English, unfortunately, but the anime is, so you can pretty much um, understand the story through that. But um, a total hit and gem that I think uh, people should know about. One of my favorite video games based on a movie is the Ghostbusters video game. It was on Wii, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3, but a lot of people don't realize that the Wii version was really, really fun and kind of different. For starters, it had cartoony graphics rather than realistic graphics. So if you like the Ghostbusters cartoon, take a breath, Wood, you might actually like this version a little better. Plus, the motion controls are really fun. We all know that when it comes to the Wii, it's kind of a hit or miss when it comes to the motion controls being fun, but this game nailed it. it really makes you feel like you're using a proton pack and you can throw traps with the nunchuck it's really fun and i recommend checking it out it's definitely kind of a hidden gem on the wii <sighs> but it is summer in canada right now and i am sweating inside here and if i turn this fan on metal jesus might yell at me for the background noise so let's do the next one outside mix it up a bit and my next pick is a game that I left back in Australia, but I love oh so much, Alice Madness Returns. And as you can expect, it's based off the Alice in Wonderland books and series and franchise, but it puts such a dark, gruesome spin on Alice in Wonderland. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. The design of the characters, the look and feel of the entire game. It's a platformer that is honestly one of the funnest platformers I've ever played, but it's just so dark and gritty. This ain't my house. I am a huge James Bond fan, and there's one game that's always overlooked, and that is Bloodstone. So I have the 360 version right here. This was developed by Bizarre Creations, and they've made a bunch of games in the past, like, for instance, uh, Project Gotham Racing, as well as Blur, another serious hidden gem right there. So this is an all-original story. It's not based on a movie, and it's a mix of a bunch of different genres. Uh, primarily, it's a third-person cover-based shooter, there's also stealth elements in here, um, but what makes it really special is that Bizarre Creations, because they're so good at, at racing games, the chase scenes in this game are epic. And it, they are on boats, they're on cars. It's just, it's the perfect James Bond game. It's so much fun. And again, no one really talks about it. It's, it's kind of sad. Another hidden gem, 
Star Wars Republic Commando. So I have the original Xbox version here, but it also came out on Windows. This is basically a first person squad based tactical shooter. It tries to do a lot and actually it does it very, very well. Think of this as sort of a mix of Halo. There's also elements of say Metroid Prime in here. But to me, it really reminds me of SOCOM on the PlayStation 2. And that's because yes, you're going around and you're shooting, but because you're the squad leader, you're actually controlling your different squad mates. So you're telling them where to go, what doors to bust into, what enemies to shoot, when to hang back. It's such a cool game. And again, nobody really talks about it. And so it was really fun to be able to get a chance in this video to bring it up again, because I'm always, I'm always excited to do so. Speaking of which, I mean, such a great question. There are so many hidden gems that come out as licensed games. Uh, another one is Batman on the Wii. I almost picked that one. Love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What are some of your favorite licensed games that you would consider hidden gems? All right, great question. Hello, fellow adventurer. Grab a tankard of ale and let me tell you a tale of, oh my God, that rhymes, I can't say that. That's perfect, what are you talking about? <laughs> And it's Mega Force. Yeah. And it's Mega Force. This question was asked by one of my Patreon contributors who helps support my YouTube channel and helps shape the content of my videos. In addition to asking questions like this, they also get access to a private chat, an audio podcast, and early access to most of my Friday videos. You can also set the amount you want to contribute, and you can leave or change it at any time. If you'd like to help support my videos and become part of the Metal Militia, please go to patreon.com slash metaljesusrocks.